All right, so let's now define our function to generate normally distributed random numbers in an array of arbitrary shapes as defined by the argument. And first things first, let's open the edit window and let's call our function make normal array. And now we are going to write, make it slightly bigger, make normal array get what? Well, omega is the right argument is going to be the shape of the array. By the way, if you don't know, this lamp over here that illuminates our, your code is typed with APL comma because comma is the initial sound in command. And now let me open the Wikipedia page on the right so that I can see the box Mueller transform while I implement it because I don't know it by heart. And okay, maybe we should start. We should start with u1 and u2 and define them by rolling a bunch of zeros. If you can't, if you can't type as fast, don't worry. It just means that I've re-recorded this video a lot of times already <coughs> because of my silly mistakes. And now let's define these two terms separately. Let's let's say the left term. It's called s because it's the square root of something. And if you don't know the square root of something, it's something to the power of one half. And that is going to be minus two times the logarithm of u1. That's the left term. And the right term, uh, the right term, let's call it c as in cosine. It's going to be the cosine to circle of two times pi times u2. So the cosine of two times pi times u2. And finally, z0 is the product of the two terms, so we multiply them together, and that's our return value. If you press escape, the editor closes, and your function is fixed, which is the APL term for what you would call compilation in C, or maybe just saving your files and re-importing everything in Python. It's just what makes your code available. And now if you type make normal array 2, 4, you get a 2 by 4 matrix of normally distributed random numbers. And just if you want to make sure this is actually working, we can create an histogram of, th of the values we are generating just to see if they produce the bell curve, like in here. If they produce the bell curve, then we are probably doing this right. If it doesn't, maybe we have a mistake. So let's make that bell curve in the next video and get moving with our neural network implementation.